this session I'm going to demonstrate how to use formatting styles in a document in Microsoft Word and then from these styles how to create a table of contents. So formatting styles typically save you time. They're designed as a tool to save you time, particularly in formatting long documents. So it saves you time and also it provides consistency throughout the document for you. So the styles, you can access them from here. Notice you have the title style and you have the heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four styles and other ones as well. Plus you can create new styles if you want it as well or clear the formatting for specific styles in a document. So in this case, let's say this is the title of my document. At this point I can go here under the title and that has been applied by simply tapping on title here. Now if I prefer to modify the title, typically it's best to modify either the style itself by clicking edit modify here and then change this to be let's say bold and make it 14 and uh, things of that nature like whatever you prefer for this style basically and then click OK or you could change the style by formatting things the way you want over here So I'm cleaning this up a little bit. Let's say I want it this way. Once you have the style applied or changed how you want it, you can go back here under that style and choose to update it to match the selection. So you're updating the title style here so that in the future when you apply it, it'll always be that type of formatting. So if I Typically, you don't want to apply the title uh, style elsewhere in the document, but let's say I wanted to, click on it, and now it has been modified to those types of properties. So, let's say that I want to format now this heading. So, this would be heading number one. This is level one of my document content. While you can create your own personal styles, I suggest that you modify the style how you prefer. Let's say heading one here, I click on it. And let's say I didn't like it the way it looks right now. Change this to whatever you want it to look like. Let's say I want it bold and I want it um, to be indented all the way to the left here. And I want this style to be Calibri and let's say for the sake of emphasis, I want it red. So I'm modifying, I initially applied the heading one style. Now I'm modifying it. Now I'm updating this style to how I've changed it, how I like it. And then I go elsewhere in the document. Notice this is size 16 and this one I want to apply it right here. This is size 11. It's similar, but it's not the same. I click here on heading one and notice it's applying it just right away. The next one, let's say this should be a heading one as well. Click on it, it's applied. Let's say this needs to be heading one and so on throughout the document. Now you can do the same thing for the other headings as well. So you go here, let's say this, you want it to be heading two. So in the table of contents, you'll have the title, then you'll have the first level heading, which would be considerations, the study of security. Then you have general observations right below that as another heading. You can choose here heading number two. You can choose here heading number two And again, you can modify this style to what you want. Let's say I want this to be size 14, bold. And once I have applied it once, 
I want to update heading number two style so I can reapply it to other areas of the document. You can right click, choose update it to the selection, and then I go elsewhere in the document here. and choose heading number two. Notice it saves you time and it provides consistency throughout the document for you when you apply it. Obviously, this has to do also with the um, layout of the document, so you don't want to just select those levels randomly, but you want to apply it depending on how the document has been organized. So now, if I go to the top, and let's say I want to apply heading number three to another area of my document, Let's say I have here this, heading number three. Now, if for some reason you don't see heading number three or heading number four in the document, that means that you have to apply it first, let's, the previous heading. So let's say you can't apply heading number four unless you have something with a heading number three. So now I have here heading number three. I want to change the formatting as well to this. Make it, let's say, 12, size 12 update it, and then apply this same heading to other areas in my document. Now that I have applied the headings, notice it saved me time, it provided consistency. These, uh, the application of these headings can help us in creating a table of contents. So the table of contents, typically, it's at the beginning of the document. So for the sake of time and what, typically you'd have a blank page in the beginning and so on. But for now, I'm just going to insert the table of contents right here. Now, the table of contents, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but yet, since we are learning about the application of styles in the document, it's helpful to kind of tie those two together with the table of contents, and it's best to learn that now. So here we want to insert the table of contents. Table of contents, it's a reference tool that we want to insert. So you click here on references, you click on table of contents, or you could have typed up here under search, and it will go to table of contents. That's the other way to do this as well. Under Table of Contents, you have various options here that you can utilize, or different templates, basically. So here, you can pick whichever you want. I'm going to take this first one, Automatic. And now the Table of Contents will be created automatically. Notice I have level A, considerations about security, then the general observations. Notice it's uh, level 2 right below it. It has put the page numbers automatically and so on. Now, if for some reason you go and change one of those levels here or apply a different, uh, let's say in here I change this to apply level heading number 2, or let's make it one for easier identification. Once you ch make changes, whether to the page numbers or to the application of those headings, you, you can update the table of contents by going here to the table of contents, click once on it, and then choose Update Table. And then you choose to update the entire table. And then you'll notice that we'll have a new uh, heading one here in a moment. Notice this just changed and it was just updated. 
So that's how you apply styles to a document and how you create the table of contents for a document in Microsoft Word. As you're learning about the table of contents and these tools and the styles, one thing to understand at this stage is also that you can define styles a certain way to your liking with various properties and you can create your personal style of formatting as well. So you click here on the drop down and choose new style. Give it a name, click OK, and now I have the Sally style here. If I go somewhere else in the document, I can go and apply this particular style. The thing of uh, the word of caution here is that you can't apply these personal styles that you created you can't apply them very easily to the table of contents. So therefore, I strongly recommend that you utilize one of the heading styles. Then you modify that one, particularly if you're planning to create a table of contents. If you're not planning to create a table of contents, then you can create any of those personal styles.